What are you doing here? Seriously? No. I was just reading a exciting news story that hasn't been told before by an exciting voice in modern horror fiction, and you want me to do that. as saying that I believe that those 70s and 80s franchises in the horror genre that we've been following for decades need to be retired. And exhibit number one for the prosecution, Leatherface 2017. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre series was once the lifeblood of the horror genre. It was the big promise. That first film established how much was possible with almost no resources. It was the most vital, important work in the genre's history for that time, and it also forced the genre to grow up. Now, we have a weird adolescence, of course, with the 1980s and a lot of jokey humor, but that didn't really stop the genre from progressing out of the 1960s into a more raw and immediate experience. So why are we now talking about the eighth film in a franchise that never followed a single narrative thread all the way through. And why are we talking about a film that purports to be a prequel to the previous sequel, which about half the audience liked, half did not, but tried some new ideas? We're in this position because we just won't let our heroes die. An old punk rock ethos is kill your idols. And there's a reason. It's because when you become too enamored of something, you fail to see when it loses the appeal of all the things that initially drew you to it. At this point, Leatherface as a character isn't just stale, he's irrelevant. So to reinvent him like this film does, as basically an angsty teenager with some mental problems, is a deep insult. It would be akin to reinventing Norman Bates as having a father fixation. Leatherface is supposed to be a blank slate, a piece of American failure made flesh. This film wants to give him an elaborate backstory. Now, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, a different prequel to a different remake in this series, we also got a little bit of backstory on this character, but it was forgivably brief. Not so here. And what we do get is puzzling. This whole movie relies on a twist ending that surprises absolutely no one in the audience. No one is shocked by what the film thinks is a big saw-like pull-back-the-curtain reveal. In fact, that reveal would have worked better as a red herring, whereas we think the twist is coming to that and the film veers into more traditional grounds, because that would have actually been more surprising than what they did. What we get is a movie that doesn't feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In fact, it feels like a Clorox commercial, really. No atmosphere, no mood, no sense of desperation. It kind of limps through its runtime. I guess the performances are okay. I couldn't focus on the film enough to know. The score? I don't remember a thing about it. In fact, when I talk to people about this movie, the twist is the only thing they remember, and they express their frustration with it because it didn't work, it didn't surprise them. But every other detail about this film is just gone from their memory, as if at the end of this film, when the credits roll, you know, you have one of the guys from Minute Black put up that machine and flash everyone so that they don't remember the movie they just watched. It's that disposable. And if Texas Chainsaw Massacre is anything, it should be memorable. Everyone remembers their first time watching the Toby Hooper 1974 film. Everyone. And yet no one seems to remember anything about this film that came out just a couple years back. Why is that? Well, I'm going to say two things. First off, it's just a competently made film with no sense of identity. It could have been easily a prequel to A Nightmare on Elm Street with just a few tweaks. Hey, this is how Freddy's career started. Or it could have been an original property and you would never have suspected that this was a 
prequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a problem for something of this iconic of a stature. Now, someone out there is screaming at me right now that I'm always saying I want to see new. And this film tried something new. For this franchise, yes. But for the genre, not at all. This story is so by the book and so predictable that it hurt my feelings, frankly, that it kept expecting me to watch more. There's a rise and fall of action that's completely predictable and feels like those HBO dramas, whereas all the story beats are nicely lined up week by week, always pushing you to watch the next scene because maybe it'll surprise you again. And then there's a little tweak, something that goes a little bit left when you thought it would go right, but not enough to actually change the direction of the story at all or to prevent the next chapter from feeling exactly like what you watched right before it. This is a movie that just does not do anything for the franchise, it does not do any favors for the viewer, and it actually does harm to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a franchise and as a brand. We're to the point where my battle cry to stop with these 70s and 80s franchises is almost a parody of itself. I can say that, and no one really argues. They just kind of say, hey, can we get one more Friday the 13th so there's an even 13? And yes, I know 13 is not even. But this franchise, in particular, no one holds much hope. They're about to reboot it again, or something. I'm assuming that the first film, once again, will be still canon, because you'd be making a huge mistake to actually erase that film. But do we need any more of this? I'm not saying there's not an artist out there that couldn't surprise us. I was surprised by that Michael Bay produced remake in the early 2000s. But the chances for that seem to be less and less. And I don't have the confidence that we'll even get that level of competency. So why don't we do something new? Now, in these autopsy videos, traditionally, I spend my time talking about the themes. I guess I could say that this film is trying to say something about the mental health system, but since it's a prequel set in the past, it's kind of hard to make that argument here. It doesn't feel contemporary, it doesn't feel compelling, and I don't connect with any of the characters at all. The twist is predictable, the film is boring, there's not much to suggest it. Stormcloud agrees. I think, really, this film is the ultimate battle cry for some originality on the marketplace without the crutch of easy marketing of a sequel or a remake or a reboot. Because this film was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre that excited no one. When it was released, there was no big rush for people to review it. No one rushed to be the first to see it. It was like guess it's time for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. And hey, wouldn't it be great if this one was titled the same as a film we've already seen? It wasn't. And spoilers, the big climatic reveal. Oh, you thought that kid was Leatherface? Nope, that's the kid that ends up being Leatherface. You know what? The film should really take a look at that because what they did is, you think that's your audience? No, you have no audience. That's the real twist here. That's the revelation. That's the curtain being pulled back. The Emperor is wearing no clothes, and it's time to retire this franchise. If you have a different opinion than me, that's fine. And if you love this film for whatever reason, I respect your opinion. For myself, I'm done. I am done with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I have the films in the franchise that I like, and I'll revisit them as often as I choose to. But do not ask me to watch more, because I'm not going to be there. I've learned my lesson. We live in a world where there are three films called Black Christmas. Still haven't seen the third one. And as time goes by, my morbid curiosity to check it out gets less and less. I have even less curiosity about another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, buyer beware. If you do rent this movie, and by that I mean buy it on one of the streaming services, know that you're going to probably regret your purchase. Because it is an hour and a half of a Clorox commercial. And you won't remember a bit about it. So if that's a good way to spend your money, you do that. For myself, 
I've completed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise autopsies, and I think it's been a wild ride. You've seen the valleys and you've seen the peaks. And what I'd say is it's a very unique series and there is some really worthwhile stuff along the way. But it's a franchise that never came close to matching the intensity of its original.